Hey everybody, good morning. Josh Balog here with your devotion for the day. We're going to be in Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 40. And I just wanted to summarize the story that we have there. Just preceding this passage, we had the conversion of Lydia, who happens to be a very influential uh, business person there in the area, and someone that we'll see come into the story a little bit later in the book of Acts as, as well. Um, but in this particular story here, Paul and Silas are on a missionary journey, and they are just kind of minding their own business, going to the temple, um, and they encounter this girl that uh, has been is filled with demons that is able to kind of tell the future, and has been making money for um, for the people that own her, I guess, the slave girl, and so Paul gets annoyed with her and and commands the, the demon to come out in Jesus' name, and it does. And so these guys are frustrated that they're not able to make money from her anymore, and they they uh, they got the everybody all stirred up against them, making some false accusations against Paul and Silas. And as a result of that, they end up getting beaten with rods and thrown in prison into the inner prison with stocks and in stocks and in chains and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, we find Paul and Silas just minding their own business, doing what they're supposed to be doing, and getting themselves in a little bit of trouble. So they're in prison, and then the story proceeds that Paul and Silas, uh, around midnight, uh, were singing and praising and praying, and the prisoners that were there with him were listening and observing what was going on. Uh, a great testimony to them. Um, what a perspective, right? I think mine would have been more of complaining, but we find Paul and Silas uh, praising. And then the, the Southern Baptist uh, upbringing or preacher in me wants to go all alliteration here and say, you know, that um, Holy Spirit power is preceded by prayer and praise. Uh, that's, I think that's a world-class alliteration. Um, but that's what we see here, because as they're praising and as they're praying and as they're singing, um, the Holy Spirit, I believe, uh, sends an earthquake. And this is an earthquake that releases them from all of their chains. All the chains fall off of them and all the other prisoners. And the jailer, of course, whose one job is to keep them in prison, is in despair. And I think is about to end his own life because he thinks all the prisoners have escaped. But Paul and Silas say, we're all still here. And then the jailer falls at their feet and says, what must I do to be saved? And so Paul has an opportunity uh, to share the gospel and the jailer receives Christ at that moment and then he begins to tend to the wounds of Paul and Silas so we just see such a beautiful picture here of the one who was meant to be their uh, imprisoner or the one to keep them in chains then becomes a healing agent just a few hours later for Paul and Silas and then this jailer is baptized and his whole family is saved and baptized um, and Paul and Silas are released and they get to go up and uh, visit with Lydia uh, some more after that. So that's verses 16 through 40 of chapter 16. And just the activation I really see for us, um, I don't have really a, a whole lot to say about it other than the fact that uh, the observation, the activation for us really is as we're going and as we're living our lives as uh, lifestyle missionaries, there's sometimes going to be um, these, what we would, uh, what we could view as interruptions to our day and what we can't view as interruptions to our day. It's just the Holy Spirit giving us a nudge to say something or to minister to an individual. And so in our obedience, as we do those things, we're not even guaranteed that it's going to be um, an amazing outcome. Uh, we, <laughs> Paul and Silas were thrown in prison uh, just for being obedient. And so um, it's just something for us to keep in mind that um, another way to uh to trust god's faithfulness over our feelings is they could have gotten all up in their feelings right that they've been obedient they were just doing the lord's work and then they find themselves in prison and their perspective really was to continue to praise god and to pray um, and to minister to those that they were around which would have been the other prisoners and and through that you know a philippian jailer and i believe too probably some prisoners uh, that, that were in there with them were redirected towards christ and away from um, their imprisonment and a life of crime even and so uh, we're not promised uh, anything really in the Christian life in fact if we're promised anything is that there will be trouble but we're given a promise that 
you know, to take heart that he's overcome the world. And so the activation for us really is to be obedient, uh, to be interruptible, um, and to keep the perspective of, of praise and prayer, no matter our circumstances. So again, that comes back to trusting God's faithfulness over our own feelings. Um, and I think that's really what I wanted to what I wanted to say, what I wanted to challenge us with today, to keep a perspective um, of praise and prayer, no matter our circumstances. They could be great, uh, they could be not so ideal, uh, but all things being considered, uh, Jesus is still Lord. He's still on the throne, and uh, He promises that He'll be with us wherever we go. So even in the not so great circumstances or what we would deem not good. He's working all things for the good of those who love him. And so we kind of have to redefine what good is. Uh, it can't be by our definition, but it has to be by what God's definition is. So let's keep a perspective of praise and prayer, no matter our circumstances. And let's uh, approach life much like Paul and Silas did uh, and just take it, roll with the punches, be obedient when you hear, uh, to do something that may be a little bit strange, be obedient to say something that may be a little bit out of left field to you, but the Lord is working all things out for his purposes and he chooses to use us. So let's keep a perspective of praise and prayer and continue to walk in obedience. And I think we will be just fine if we will do that. And we'll have some exciting stories to tell too, I believe. So I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, you are loved, walk in that love, uh, Jesus loves you. And I uh, just pray that you are able to spread his love with everything you say and everything you do today. Y'all take care.